Hello again, Ian Stokey with Mastermind Games, back from World Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress. This time, Aradia Medellin, the Primaris Psyker. Fair skin, 09047. I don't know a whole lot about Primaris Psyker, but from what I've gleaned from mostly uh, various novels, they're a particularly potent grade used mostly for combat. And in game, I've only kind of skimmed her cards. She's pretty much a wrecking ball and lacks a manipulation abilities that uh, Esper Locarno possesses. So. And her head is the only bit of flesh exposed. So, I would go on that. Now. I think I'm going to need to let that dry before I move on already because I need to coat a specific way. Well, hmm. I just noticed her staff is actually made of wood. I thought it was metal. So I have to get a few more colors out anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and let that dry and come back in a minute. Oh, and the fork is still not quite right in. All right, fine. Okay, I got things figured out. Shield Brown 09161. That's one thing when uh, you assemble and prime a model right away and then wait months before you get around to painting it, you can kind of forget about uh, details that uh, were bluntly obvious during assembly, but uh, don't stand out too much uh, when everything is a flat matte black. Stormy Gray 09088. Do I want to do this? Yeah, I want to do this. So, with this, I'm going to get the pants. And there's not a whole lot of those visible. And the last pistol in the holster. Okay. And I think I want to let this dry for a little bit before I move on. So I'll come back in a bit. Okay, so we have a little more focus trouble on this one again. Uh, I'm gonna just do the next base coat and we'll go from there. 09116 Brilliant Blue. This is gonna go on the bulk of our coat. Which this is plugged up, so paper clip down the nozzle. That one's got a bit too much stuff on it, I'll have to retire it. This uh, triad I'm using here is a nice dark blue. And first off, I need to grip by the base. We'll go underneath the uh, coat here. This will be done in another color. I want to get this uh, sort of loincloth between the legs. I just nick the pants. I'll have to touch that up. The official colors in the promotional content. Looks like a very military Cadian color scheme, and that's fine, but uh, 
I figure somebody working with a rogue trader should be more colorful. This uh, chest piece is actually going to end up being metal, so and the belt's going to be a bright color. So there's not quite as much of this as I initially thought there was going to be. So okay, just uh, touch this up a bit more and. Clean out the brush, go back into that stormy grain, just to touch up the knee here real quick. Go back into that blue and just touch it up kind of like that. And then I'm going to let this dry completely and move on. Oh, wait. I did miss a significant part, and that's why I needed to wait for the head to dry. The collar. So breastplate and this cowling is uh, part of this collar. Let's see if I'll put it on her cheek there. That'll be alright. I can make that come out of the side. I gotta put some cyber eggs on her head anyway. And I do want to let this dry at this point again. So back in a bit and uh, let's see if I got some more lighting here. That'll help. Okay. Got a little more light in here. That seems, seems like that's helping a little bit. So, uniform gray now. There's a very specific order to the way I'm doing things. Generally, I'm working the lowest area on the model, the highest, and not this. The boot, and this is kind of something that made me want to rethink the pants color at one point, but I think there'll be enough of a distinction that'll be alright. Okay. I'll adjust this one a bit. I keep, uh, Getting my hand in front of me, it's cutting off my lighting from that angle. Which I kind of need because when it's this saturated, it's blinding if it's not even, at least for me anyway. And again, I also have permanent eye damage. So. Much more. Uh, yeah, that's. Uh, something so yeah I want to get the belt sash and the holster in a different color one that's much brighter than what I'm doing right now so We'll leave that alone. But what I can do is take antique gold 09050 and get a few other details. Staff and to start with the eye here. Get the quill on top, the all seeing eye here. The rest will be done in, uh, in uh, different colors. But it 
this part meant to focus the will of the Emperor. Or at least that's how I perceive it anyway. It's a force staff or some equivalent thereof. Let's see. So on the front of the breastplate here with the same insignia. And I'll carefully pick it out on the cloth here. That's a bit ugly, but it'll work. Your skull-shaped belt buckle. Whoa, almost dropped it. And we'll go ahead and do this now and try to work around it, but I might have to just redo this. We'll just, I'm just going to roll with it. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to redo that, so I'm not going to worry about it, because I want to get this right here. There's another symbol on the back of the cowl, and I'll need to get that cowl first. And I want to get the tassels at the end of this uh, sash in it as well, and the gold as well, but I'll just do another round of gold in a bit, and that'll be fine. So, back in a bit. Alright. Marine Teal 09077 is going to be the brightest color I use. So I'm going to give her a little extra flair. Outside of the actual, oh, I just realized I missed part of her coat. Well, that'll be easy enough to fix. Or, no, no, I screwed that up. That is part of the coat. The sash is, goes along up here, so I'll just patch that up off camera. Same color. And I'll just redo that uh, icon there. Okay, let's see here. Okay. Oh, I'll touch that patch up and then uh, come back. Let that dry for a minute and get one. One, uh, one of the last base coats. I'm getting a little dazed here. Okay. Tarnished Steel 09206. And I was definitely a bit premature when I did the gold one I did, so... I'll be picking out a few more details in that after I take care of this. I may or may not decide to do that off-camera, so... I'm going to start with this cabling going across the chest and into the uh, backpack. Get all of that. The hood here and this emblem on the back is something that I'm going to pick out later for certain gold. Again, I know very little about the Primaris Psychers used by the Imperial Guard, which she was part of apparently before signing up with the uh, Niam Shai Marad. And, uh, but I believe it's similar to the uh, amplifier hoods, these psychic hoods that space brain librarians use. Not necessarily identical, but uh, something similar enough to draw the comparison to. Cabling in 
and the reinforcement on our staff. And power weapons used by many forces of the Imperium, including space marines, are sheathed in deadly energy fields, while some of which can disrupt matter, while force weapons used exclusively by psychers amplify their psychic powers and put their uh, that power into the strikes of the weapon. I think I am going to go ahead and let that dry, then do some gold. I saw him decide it will be on camera or off, but uh, just what got this done. So, back in a little bit here. Back on that. Oh, wait, wait. Actually, no. I'm not done yet because she's got wires in her head. This apparatus here. All right. Well, actually, that's dry enough. I can go ahead and get back to that golden list. So never mind doing the base coats in another take. We'll just wrap up right now. And this is what can happen when you change your mind. As I've said many times before, this is also one of those things where I get exactly one shot at getting this right. So 09050 antique gold. Just pick out that symbol on the holster and on the back here. Tassels on the yeah, sash. Okay. And then this is a color I'm going to use again a little later. It's a true blue 09017. Or rather, it's related to a color I'm going to use later. And I'm just going to get all these wires on the back of the cowl in this red would also be appropriate but i'm not going to bother using that one on this so we'll just uh pick out these clusters of wires and that's space coats i'll that dry completely and i can start shading as well Okay, now to shade, Sapphire Blue 09016. Fitting the uh, paint with one part water and one part paint into a uh, wash. And going over the base coat. This will get into the deepest nooks and crannies and make them appear darker especially when combined with the highlight ancient bronze 09049 So I'm keeping my brush nice and wet, but I'm also trying to keep just enough paint in here to do the job on these uh, smaller details. Because this will uh, go wild very easily. Working from the highest to the lowest area, from the highest area on the model to the lowest, that will help with any corrections I need to make. That is going to take some work to uh, polish. 
wash up, but I can handle it. Okay. I'm trying to avoid getting any of this in the uh, hollow area between that eye. Just blowing it out there. All right. Okay, I'm going to let that dry completely. Well, wait a minute. I can do one more. Stormy Gray 0988. some circuitry here so I'm trying to look around that. Maybe cautious of the uh, palm because that's flesh. And the boots. So a stone here. Okay, now I'm going to let this dry completely before moving on. Oh, okay. Next. Black and steel, 09205. Sex and out. You can't go over the strip tree here. Cow. And on the back. Avoiding the other colors. Let's fill in the backpack. Again, there's going to be lighting effects at the end, so. This cable and the uh, fingertips and strip tray on the back of the hand. I get the other side of that cable and this cable. I'll just do the front of the staff here right now, including that little the yeah, butt of it. Back side. And I'm gonna have to let that wait and dry a bit before I move on. Get in there. No, oh, sure. Now it won't. First, folks, then I won't. Oh boy. That was just gonna be a bunch of experimentation, I guess. Mm. Oh, great. As soon as I hit play, my camera starts acting up. All right, fine. I'm doing this quick anyway. So, Deep Ocean 09076. I'm just going to get the sash and move on. So, fit it out. And just go over the sash. 
carefully avoiding the uh, bit of the coat I accidentally caught when I did the base coat. You can try to the back side here. And of course, the holster for the last pistol. I'm just going to go ahead and let that dry, see if I can't fix my uh, camera for the next take, so uh, back in a bit. Well, let's see if this is enough light to work with. We'll just kind of adjust based on everything else going on, but uh, we'll just see. Uh, better look blue 0915. This bottle is almost empty. I've got a spare on hand, and this nozzle is clogged. Which is where a standard office paper clip comes in handy. This one's just about empty, but I do believe I have a spare on hand. There we are. There's some stuff out of there. That should be plenty. Uh, these things make the most awkward noises when they're running low on paint. Let's get that thinned out. And of course, something to watch out for, especially with colors you don't use very often, is this kind of uh, drying out in the bottle. But uh, adding a little mixing medium or even water will help, at least a bit. Actually, I think this is supposed to be part of the no, no, that is, uh, that is steel. Let's uh, just kind of backpedal on that. I can patch that up. Fine. Get the sleeves and the coat. I'll just start on the back here, just because. And just letting this highlight, this uh, not highlight shade, just flow down. So I get that part and the cloth between the legs, which uh, I'm sure if there's a specific terminology for it, I just don't know what it is right this second. Let's go through some books and look it up though. And as useful as the internet can be for information, there's also a lot of bad information out there. And I just personally prefer books, to be honest. Let's see. Yeah, that reasonably gets that uh, coat without hitting the sash. Let's just go ahead and let's touch that up a little. I think that's got a little bit better. I need a little dot of this on the back of the head here. Just in there. And one stain brown, 09160. I'll get the staff. Let's get that thinned out. So that's just going to leave the uh, gray, the pants, and the pistol, as well as the flesh tone, which I can do simultaneously. And I can prep some lighting effects and go on from there. Oh, and I'm dropping frames like madness again. Wow. It's like I'm stopping just in time, at least, to uh, 
which is somewhat less awkward. Good gravy. Okay, last of the shading. I'll start with matte black. Now with particularly dark colors like this, you'll need two to three parts water to one part paint. Too little water and uh, the black will dominate, but if you get it just right, it'll darken your base coat and darken the recessed areas just fine. In this case, that's going to be the uh, pants and the pistol hanging out of that holster there. And the fair shadow, 09046. And one part water, one part paint on that one. Just a dot on the palm of the hand. And then go over the head, trying to go around the uh, cranial implants there. And angles get the uh, face. Okay. Okay. I need to let all this dry completely before I prep the lighting effects, so I'll come back and do that. So, back in a uh, bit there. Would you to focus? I guess not. Maybe there's a lot of focus this time. Alright, I'll keep tweaking the lights and see what I get. Okay. Well, this arrangement seems to let me, uh, let the camera focus a little better. Not white. So. Can you use this to fill in all the lighting effects or prep them anyway? You know, a little slightly more water than a base coat, but not as much as a uh, shade. It's going to fill in her eyes. And now, it just spills over a bit, that's fine. All these, uh, did, uh oh, that can be a lot of hand there. Let's blot that out. Take some of the extra water out of my brush with the paper towel I have on hand. Fill in these orbs here. Be one color for all the lighting. Now on the staff, I definitely want the uh, lens of the crystal because all of this essentially is her psychic power flowing through all of this gear. These insets here and on the side as well. on the side. Call them whatever you want to. I don't even know what the uh, technical name would be. So, just to make sure everything that I want to up is ready to go. Okay. I think that's good. So I need to let that completely dry. And I can now uh, light her up. Okay, let's get this lit up. Sky blue 0908. This will also be the highlight for the uh okay maybe this one a little bit. It's also gonna be the highlight for the wires in the back of the head, but just need a little drop. For a lighting effect, you're gonna use two to three parts water to one part paint. 
and overall the key is to have some of the white showing through. So, so our psychic knight has her eyes and her mouth lit up. All these nodes on the back of her cowl, the fence and her staff. Crystal. crystal, which needs just a little more pigment. that dry completely and once it does I will uh, highlight detail and then start on basing. Hmm. So it was still a bit out of focus on that one so I just have to keep playing around with things until I get it right. And I'll get it eventually. That's just a mess right there. Oh there we go yeah. I'll get this right eventually, because I have to keep trying new things till I do. Okay, time to highlight. Fair Highlights 09048. And for this, we're going to need a ragged feather brush, something, let's see, something along the lines of this. No water, straight paint only. I'm going to rub it out on the paper towel we've had this whole time until it looks like there's next to nothing left. And the dusty area to be affected so a little bit on the palm. I'll still focus on the head going against raised areas. because it's only the pants which only have a little visible as well as the grip of the last pistol. Cyan blue zero nine one one side. And I'm gonna focus issue again for crying out loud. Good grief. Well, let's try getting another light on in here and see if that helps any. A little bit. So this is, again, cyan blue 09117. I can get a grip on the brush I want. Okay, keep an eye on my, trying to keep an eye on my camera because I want to make sure it works. Focusing on the readily visible surfaces now. I'll get the coat flowing here, but not what's uh, between the legs there. That'll just stay shaded. And this one's kind of subtle, but... I'm not certain it's showing up very well on the camera, but it 
really catches the edges in person. Wood Brown zero nine one six two. No, uh -oh. lids are flying. Ah, boy. Surf Aqua zero nine zero seven eight. Oh, I'm dropping some frames again. Let's just hang on a second. Oh boy. Once again, the more technology advances. The more things are turning out like that movie Spaceballs. Closing on being done already. Misty Gray, 09090. True Silver zero nine two zero seven. It's another one that's running kind of thin. Should have enough to do the job. Just need to pick up the right brush for the job here. This is just kind of burnishing the steel. Sky Blue, zero nine zero one eight. Just a bit of a 
focus on the wires. And the last one is new gold zero line zero five one. Again, going against any raised edges on that, the cap of the staff there. Let's get uh, all of that. Now for a little matte black to polish up the base, but so no pupils in the eyes this time. Her eyes and mouth are overflowing with psychic might reflected in the conduits and amplifiers around her hood and the staff as well. And I'm going to a flathead brush. Her is the one I like. There it is. I'll organize my brushes a bit better, I think. Using the same amount of water in the base coat, just enough to thin out the paint. So I'm going to go around the edge, being careful where to parse them all, come close to it, and this just uh, will live with a nice finish. And the choice of black is just completely arbitrary. This is just to polish it up. Okay, that's it for painting. I need to let this dry completely. And once it does, I can apply some basic material. So back in a little bit. Oh, great. Now having all this light is uh, hurting the focus too. Good gravy. All right. Keep playing around with it. Okay, time to get some basic material on there. I'm using talus, which is a rock debris, a mix of fine and coarse. Well, my glue bottle's kind of stuck, but there we go. White glue and water in a convenient container, and this is just the lid to a bottle of Gatorade. A lot of the drinks, single serve, will have kind of a waxy, rubbery coating the lid, which actually helps stop things from sticking to it and keeps it uh, usable for a while. I've had, been using these uh, for a few years. Yeah, I said years. I'm going to dilute it with water. Mix it all up with a brush I've dedicated to the purpose. The shape gets kind of funky after a while, so it's not really something you want to use for anything else once you've earmarked it. And it's going to paint the solution on the throw and going up to, but not trying to avoid going over the feet, but going to be a workaround anyway, because it's inevitably going to happen. Let me give it a dip in the uh, material. Brushing off the excess. I'm going to take a spare brush that's dry and just push that away from areas I don't want it. Not 
too bad on this one. I think I need to add a little more uh, fine towels to the mix, but now that's going to have to set for at least 20 minutes, 20 to 30, give or take. And I'll explain more in the next step, which is the last thing I'll keep on camera, so back in a bit. Okay, last step that I can do on camera. So I just noticed I actually misspelled a last name on the video description. Hopefully I, or the video file, hopefully that's uh, not shown on YouTube, but we'll just see. All right. So Scenic Cement, this is a sprayer brush on adhesive. It's a Woodland Scenics thing. Glass eyedropper, because this stuff will bond to plastic quickly and clog one of those up. Now you need to let your glue solution set for a bit first. Otherwise this will just put holes in your basic material and just push it around, making little divots. But this will now seal it and give it a rock hard finish. The only thing left to do is uh, varnish it. But that is uh, it. Primera Psychra Radia Medellin from Warhammer Quest Blackstone Fortress's Escalation Expansion. Uh, two more explorers uh, who makes two videos, followed by a uh, retinue character. And uh, until then, I am Ian Stuckey with Mastermind Games, signing out.